Hey guys, I'm Sota. I'm Yuta. I'm Yuta. And today we're here with Mr. Tower Sock. Hello guys, thank you for welcoming me. Hello. He is one of like the most famous English interviewing YouTubers here in Japan, and he has like 700,000 subscribers. So you could say he's like the Christian Ronaldo oh. of like the English learning interviewing thank YouTube you world. Thank you. And um, he is really famous. Um, but on our channel, most of our viewers are like from foreign countries. So some of them might not know you. So um, could you please do like an introduction of yourself? Of course. So my name is Tarasek. I am from Japan and I am a content creator for interview people to see, to see, you know, the contrast between cultures and, um, you know, the people's different opinions and all that. And I have been trying to interact uh, entertain Japanese people with some like interesting topics in with the interview videos but at the same time let them learn how to speak English and also the listening skill as well um, when I have free time I work I do YouTube when I don't have time I do YouTube so I'm pretty much like a workaholic anyway thank you very much for welcoming me to your channel I'm very thank excited. you thank you for being here um, we love your channel, by the way. We have huge fans. I love my channel, too. <laughs> <laughs> so today, we'll be talking with him about communication. Mr. Tarasak mainly like makes um, interview videos, mm -hmm. right? So I think you have to be good at interviewing if you want to make a good video. Definitely. And I've watched a ton of your videos, and I think you're really good at interviewing people. Thank you. And... Um, that means I think you have really good communication skills. I believe so. <laughs> yeah, so, and I also think that communication skills are really important for daily life. So we would also like to learn a bit from listening to your tips about communication skills mm -hmm. today. And we'll be interviewing him about that. Okay. And also, um, if you wondered, like, how he mastered his English, how he's so good at English, um, well, he's made like various videos about how he's mastered his English and he's also published a book about it So um, if you want to know how he learned his English make sure to check those out Those will be in the description down below and his channel will be too. So make sure to check that out. Yeah. Okay, let's start the interview Okay, so first mm -hmm. why did you start making interview type videos? Okay, so the reason why I started doing the interview video is gonna be like I started my YouTube channel. I think that was uh, around uh, 2020 May. I think so. Yeah, at the time I lost my job because you know we were quite in a hard time, right? Yeah. Um, I was a chef actually. I oh, was doing a teppanyaki, really? and so I lost my job and I had too much time actually. I was playing PlayStation 4 for like eight hours, ten hours every day, wow. which is which is not good. Which that's is not healthy. That's not healthy. So, um, luckily, I had my um, one of my best friends uh, kept telling me uh, that I have to start doing something. So I was like, okay, I can do YouTube because YouTube sounds fun, isn't it? Like yeah. it, it's 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 actually fun. And I started doing a YouTube because I can speak English. Okay, not perfect, but uh, so I started my English channel. Um, I was teaching how to learn English and also I was giving a tip of Australia to Japanese people because I've lived there for a long time already. Yeah. But then YouTube so hard, it didn't really grow. My channel didn't really grow. So I was like, oh, okay, I have to do some more research. And I've watched so many like YouTubers in YouTube Japan. Tutorials. Yeah, YouTube tutorials, of course, and also YouTubers, Japanese YouTubers who live overseas. Yeah. And yeah, some of them are teaching English, some of them like doing a vlog sort of things. And I found that interview videos can be watched by so many people. Yeah. So I found that and I started doing it. That's pretty much the reason that I started the interview, yeah. Well, were you, like, um, good at talking to people from the start? Or, like, were you nervous when you, like, interviewed, like, people you've never met? Okay. That is actually a good question. I consider myself that I'm a person who is pretty good at talking to people. Like, I had... Uh, Obviously, I have some friends and in Japan and when I was a bit younger, I always make them laugh. You know, I still make them laugh, but like I was a funny person, you know, I talk and we can say extrovert. Yeah, I'm oh, very extrovert yeah. and I can talk to people. I can make them laugh. So, yeah, like I said, I believe myself. I'm good at uh, talking to people and be funny. 
But uh, interviewing people is a different thing. You know, you got to talk to strangers on the street and ask them to cooperate. Yeah, it's me. A totally different. Yeah, so that thing. was a different. I had to gain my skill from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Did you get along with YouTube from the beginning? And do you have any failure stories? I've had so many failure stories. So, you know, something like YouTube is really difficult, right? Yeah. It doesn't grow that fast. So I, I think it took me over six months to, you know, to make it grow up. Um, usually one video takes like 10 hours to plan and film and edit, edit and publish. That takes a long time. It's I a long process. Exactly. I sacrificed all my time. I stopped hanging out with my friends. Obviously, I don't go out to eat with my friends. I spent all my time, but then when I upload, it's like 70 views, 80 views. That's, I can't say sad because it's normal, but yeah. uh, it was a little bit sad and disappointing. But then I didn't give up. I didn't give up because at the time I, I was not really happy about my life. So I kept doing it and then it went up. So that was good. But there are so many other failures as well. For example, I interview videos, right? Yeah. I have microphone and interview people, but then you know, it's so difficult to interview people, to stop people on the street and ask them, you know, many questions. Yeah, because they might be busy and all of that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Not, not everyone's going to say yes to you, you know. Yeah. Some, some people say, ah, oh, nah, I don't want to do that. And, the, you know, they are relatively more straight than Japanese people. They're like, yeah, they are. The Japanese people will say, like, uh, I'm a little bit busy, sorry. But they will say, I'm not interested in it. You know, you know, something like that. Uh, so, yeah, like, what are you trying to say? Sorry, yeah, not exactly. interested. It's pretty hard. What? But then I did that. And I, when I went home, I checked my videos and the microphone's broken. No videos can be used. <laughs> that happens. The microphone's off. All, all the videos are there, but the microphone's off. And oh, does there's, it happen to there's you no voice. That happened yeah. multiple <laughs> times. But you know what, you know? We need a failure to grow up. Yes. So yeah, we need to learn from our failures. Exactly. Yes. Anytime, even now, I have many failures, but that's a different level already. So I don't make the mistake of the, about the microphones and stuff anymore, but I make more like technical mistakes and stuff, but that's already like high level. Each failure brings you up one level. Exactly. You need a failure to grow up. Yeah. How did you improve your interviewing skills? How did I improve my interview skills? So uh, obviously you need an experience. Yeah. Um, um, that was like a three years ago when I started interviewing people. Of course, I was like, nah, I was not good. I always stop and do it again. And sometimes, to be honest, right, um, some people I interview, they're like, oh, OK, no more. That's it. Bye. Yeah, that happened. But like I said uh, before, you need a failure and I don't do that mistake anymore. Um, how do I improve my interviews? I think um, preparation is the key. Yeah. You need a preparation. Like I said, I'm very extrovert and I believe myself I'm good at talking to people, but that's just a shallow confidence. I don't believe this is a proper confidence. But where the where do you think the confidence comes from? The confidence comes from um, practice beforehand and preparation beforehand. Exactly. Practice beforehand and preparation beforehand. So once you prepare really enough, and that's going to be your confidence. And I found that. So that's why nowadays when I make interview videos, I prepare a lot and go to the, I usually go to the beach because it's beautiful. I go to the beach and make interview videos. No problem. No worries. Then that's how my interview videos quality went up because I'm confident now. Amazing. What is the most important thing when communicating with people? Okay, I think the most important thing when you're communicating with the people is that to have an interest on them. Um, you want to ask why, what, how, where, when. You know, these questions are really um, necessary things because if you just keep talking, you're pretty annoying. You yeah. know? You're, like, think about when you go to karaoke. If someone holds microphone all the time, 
that's that's annoying, right? Yeah. So, but you give a microphone and let them talk, and you're like, wow, really? Wow, that's good. And they're gonna automatically, naturally start feeling like, I feel comfortable to talk to this guy. And that's how you start a conversation. Exactly. And、um, they will talk naturally.、Uh, they will talk better. And、uh, you don't need to ask too many questions. They already talk. Yeah. So that means、um, you have to make an environment in which you can make the other guy feel comfortable、exactly. to talk to you. Exactly. So it's kind of like trust. It's yeah. It's a building trust, you know. In、uh, maybe in a minute or in two minutes, and that's how you make a trust. That's that's a good one. Yeah. Nice. What do you keep in mind when you're talking to someone you've never met, and how do you get close to them? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, imagine like this. When you are talking to someone and they'll ask you question and you answer to that. So, for example, this guy asks you, "Okay, when you go to、uh, Kanagawa, what do you usually do?" And you're like, "Oh, when I go to Kanagawa, I go to this place and this place." And what if this guy's reaction will be like, "Yep, yep, yep." So, like, you need to be interested. Yeah. So, if the guy's like that, you're Like subconsciously start feeling like、right. oh, I, I, you kind of get it nervous. Like,、yeah. uh, is this guy enjoying listening to yeah, my like, stories and you, stuff? You would be like, is this guy not interested in me? Yeah,、And、exactly. You would want a reaction. Yeah. So, for example, if I ask this guy, like, okay, what do you do when you go to Tokyo? And this guy start saying like, okay, I actually have something that I really want to eat. What is it? I want to eat monjayaki in Tokyo. Monjayaki, really? What makes you think so? And that kind of positive reaction that makes them easier to talk, you know? Yeah, that makes the talker more comfortable. Yeah, exactly, more yeah. comfortable. So that's the key. That's the biggest key, I think. Is there any difference in the way you communicate when the person you are talking to is foreign or Japanese? That's a really tricky question, you know.、Yeah. Um, you know,、um, first of all, as I think、uh, many people might know, that we have a keigo and、uh, like a casual language, right? So the keigo, which is formal language,、uh, obviously we need to change when you speak Japanese. When you speak in Japanese, but、uh, well, in English. I don't say you don't have that for hundred percent, but you kind of have the way to speak politely. But generally speaking, you can speak、uh, like casually. Yeah. So that's a two different things. But I don't know if you guys have this issue, but the I think most of Japanese people who study English tend to have this issue, which is like. There are different personalities when you speak English and Japanese. Yeah. So like, I, I think you feel the same. But、uh, when I speak Japanese, I'm Tarasek. But I, when I speak English, I'm more like a. I used to be more like a soft, kind of cute Tarasek. I think it's because of my lack of vocabulary or maybe lack of、uh, English conversation skill or something. But sometimes, now it's okay. But I used to sound a bit. Cuter when I speak English, but I found that the better your English gets, the smaller the gap goes.、Yeah. You know? Do you feel the same? Yeah. Or do I you? Really, I really、oh. do. So when you speak English, how do you feel? I feel like、um, I'm a bit more like I get express myself better in English. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like I I can talk more freely to other people. Okay. Then Japanese, I think. Yeah, yeah. See, the personality changes in、uh, yeah, languages. Yeah, it really does. This is interesting. Hey,、yeah. it's hard to express it in words, but it really has a difference. There's really a gap. Yeah. That's it. Okay, last question. On our channel, like many foreign people who are interested in Japan, watch our videos. So we want to ask you a question for our viewers.、Mm -hmm. We've never been abroad. Okay. So we don't know what it's like abroad, like firsthand.、Mm -hmm. But you've been to Australia, right? Yep. So I want you to tell us,、um, what do you find attractive about Japan after leaving Japan? Okay, this is a great question because, as a Japanese person, I was born and raised in Niigata, and I had so many things that I like about Japan.、Mm. But then, when I was a uni student, I was、uh, like kind of like a back. I went to many Asian countries and Europe, and now, as you know, I live in Australia. And once you experience that, you know this experience, 
uh, taught me more clear a vision to uh, like the beauty of Japan. Mm-hmm. So I have two questions to the answer. The first one is going to be um, our hospitality. Like the hospitality means yeah. that the, anywhere you go in Japan, they are really welcoming. Yeah, they're really welcoming. Right? Yeah. Um, like, Ilashaimase, what do you want? And blah, blah, blah. And they're really but, polite. Exactly. So, you know, at the same time, you can call them robotic. Like, like there is no emotion. Yeah, they feel guess, like yeah. they they doing that, They what, what they have to do. But still, I feel like the hospitality is the best here uh, in the world. Um, so that's that's really beautiful. But at the same time, you can you can say this is a uh, also double edged sword because I found that in Australia, uh, when you go to a restaurant or like when you go shop something, the really casual. They're like, okay, um, where is this? I ask them, and they're like, uh, I don't know, mate. You know, sometimes like that. It doesn't really? happen in Japan. In but, Japan, they would probably go, okay, I'll go check. Exactly. Or if they didn't know, they would go check. And if they knew, okay, right down there, oh, oh just follow me. Yeah, exactly. Just follow me. I'll, I'll guide you, sir, whatever. But there, they're like, ah, sorry, I don't know, mate. Sometimes that happens. So I was shocked. But at the same time, think about when you're working there. You don't you don't have to be like that, but it's oh, it's like easier, right? Yeah, it, easier because it's still a bit rude in there in Australia as well. Yeah. But uh, you don't have to be like super super man. So yeah. you don't have to be, be yeah, you don't yeah. have to be perfect. It's not necessary thing. So like I said, it's a double edged sword. But still, I feel like the Japanese hospitality is the best. And the other one is gonna be about food. food. You know the yeah. food because it's so normal for me and for you guys to be able to have something nice in yeah. this country. Everywhere, anywhere you go, even cheap food, expensive food, they're nice. You know, yeah. they're nice and clean. But, like I said, I live in Australia. You don't find this quality of food. Really? Exactly. Like, 7-Eleven and any convenience stores has amazing food in Japan. But it's a different story when you are outside Japan. So we have to appreciate this fact that we can always access to some like oh, high beautiful... quality food. Exactly. Even at convenience stores. Exactly. That's what I found uh, from the experience of living abroad. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No worries. Thanks so much. Okay, so today we interviewed Mr. Tarasak about communication. Yeah. And we learned a lot. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you very much for having me in your channel. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. We had so much fun with you. And his channel will be in the description down below. And we'll also be in his video. So make sure to check that out too. So I guess this is the end of the video. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.